Welcome to Crimson Guitars, or to be more precise, welcome to my tiny workshop. I have, I have moved, I've moved and built a small shed at the end of my garden so that I can uh, quarantine somewhat while still having fun and making things. And uh, to that point, well, this is going to be a limited tool build because I don't have my factory. Uh, nor most of my toys. I do think, however, it's going to make for an interesting series. Burn it. Ha <laughs> ha! Yay! I am taking this. Yes, that's how close the next wall is. I am taking this. This is one of Crimson's uh, SRP kits, PRS based obviously. I am going to take this SRP kit and finally build a Cyberpunk 27 inspired build guitar thing. I was trying for, I was trying for something that just didn't come across there. I'm excited. Okay, uh, so yeah, the whole point is I'm going to take this guitar, I'm going to rip it up, I'm going to completely change it, and I'm going to prove what can be done with a quality kit guitar, i.e. you can take it and make something totally unique and pretty bloody special, I hope, with limited tools. So, uh, well, let's get on with the design, shall we? Pencil. Inspiration. Cyberpunk 2077. Image. Here are some matching news Ooh, articles. Shush your mouth. I said image. Yes, I know it's been delayed again. Crikey. Images, images, images. This isn't going to be a straight up build. I'm going to push a few boundaries. So the plan is I'm going to chop that off uh, to a certain extent. I'm thinking uh, the air vent on the car uh, towards the front of the car there. So I'm going to cut that at, a, at an angle and carve it away. So you've still got the shape of the car, but there you're going into something cool. Now I want okay, some sort of F holes. I'm going to have a, a, a tone chamber, <laughs> tone chamber. Uh, this is going to be a semi-hollow instrument, so probably hollow all the way in here. I'll route that from the back, probably, but I want sound holes of some sort. Actually, that's quite...
or get rid of that. So the question is, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, about that yet, but we're getting there. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure how I feel about this line here, but that, that whole idea works quite well. This, that there is going to be a section of, of beaten, curved aluminium. And uh, there we go. So I've got a lot of that to play with. This bit angled all the way. It's going to be quite fun. Let's get on and see where we end up. I think I'm going to be coming back to these sound holes. Turns out the uh, crimson string spacing rule is actually very nicely flexible. I want to use that line somehow. It matches up with that one. Uh, I want to keep the angles the same throughout. Huh. I wonder if that's going to work or if that's far too big. Oh no, it goes to there. Essentially the trim will be there somewhere. What's that? Ten. Okay. We have a chunk of aluminium. We have another chunk of aluminium. That's going to be fun to <laughs> fun to shape to match this. I can, if I so desire, completely change the the actual outline of the instrument. But I quite like the idea that this is a continuation of a venerable design. Yeah, something from the 80s that uh, is still going strong today. So I want to change the carve here a little bit, I think, to match one of the cars, possibly both of those. The headstock is going to need to be changed for sure. This, this is interesting. This is interesting. I don't need the neck to be in here. When you buy a Crimson Guitars kit, you get something that will... It's superlative, if I do say so myself. Uh, very nice fit. Okay, I'm on. I'll chip up. I don't have the first clue what I'm going to do with these inlays yet. That will come later in the build. <sighs> okay. Now, to take the theme of inlaying material, I might... I'm going to make my life so much more difficult if I do this. Uh, I might actually... completely inlay it.
So we'll have, we'll have some clear wood. Around the edge. I might change my mind on this because this is going to be difficult. But. If you think that the, uh, the room has suddenly got bigger, yes, the camera is now outside uh, in order to get this shot. Uh, okay, so that's gonna be, this is gonna be another strip of aluminium inlaid between here and the line of the top, potentially with some sort of ports or exhaust ports or, um, I don't know tone <laughs> improvement ports of some sort of description. Okay. This curve is going to be changed. It's, it's a nice curve. I'm going to add some hard lines to it. Um, so instead of having that as a curve, I will probably have that go down to here. I can't draw that. Put it in the vice bed. I'm trying to keep all of the gaps. Uh, okay, the gaps so far there were 10 mil, and then the holes, the sound holes were five mil. I'm trying to keep that as a, a, a standard thing. So the, the gap here uh, is gonna be five mil, and it'll, it'll keep a level of homogeneity throughout the, the design. What a word. Oh, hell yeah. Okay, and that there. I get the feeling that this is going to be a lot harder than it, than I thought it was going to be. Oh well. <laughs> I do like a challenge. If you haven't seen my other guitar building videos, check out the MF kit build where I did a, a cyberpunk guitar. Um, uh, that was fun and the complication was another one. Uh, yeah. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please do, because that makes me yeah, very, very happy. Do we have a sound hole come from this up about here? I mean, it's not gonna create much sound, but uh, it could, because it's, it's right where these are. We could do away with the aluminium entirely and just have holes cut in. I am just. Okay. We have a natural. natural break where that starts so we could do that
also sure. I think. That's the thing. When two worlds collide, uh, those sound holes there are only just. Oh, look at that. If I route exactly along this line, if I route exactly along this line here, I will almost exactly be matching that line there. I may have to um, recess it just a little bit inside that carve underneath. But I think actually I might be quite, I might, might be in luck here. So, back to five mil. What I have in mind here is uh, to have a, a recessed plate that's not only recessed, but it's recessed further than it sh needs to be. So we'll, we'll have bevels here and then the back plate recessed five millimeters below the height of the, or the, the level of the back. Um, you don't need everything to be homogenous and flat and, and boring. Uh, not when you're talking about something like this. I'm bored with drawing. I'm sure you're bored of watching me draw. Uh, this design will change. Things will move. Stuff will happen. It always does when I'm building a guitar. Uh, but I'm really happy with how this is turning out. What I'm going to start with is actually, I'm going to facet out. I'm going to facet all of these out. Uh, it's essentially a wireframe model of that part of the guitar. Uh, once that's done, I am going to do the same thing here. I'm going to carve this. And with those two things carved and sorted, I can figure out exactly what's going to happen with the sound holes. I'm not 100% I'm not certain I like them, or love them, or hate them. Let me know in the comments below. What do you think? Let's get some carving done. I've changed my mind. <laughs> That's going to take some time. Two things, check this out. Um, that's wrong. That, that needs to be at an angle. Okay, period. Suddenly that looks better. Secondly, I am going to have another line going there, follow along, all the way through, all the way along and back out there. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a, a coping saw, some sort of, that sort of thing, but bigger. Stay. I'm gonna cut the whole body in half, lengthways. This sounds <laughs> illegal. Uh, and then I'm going to take a strip of aluminium and have a strip joining the whole body, like so. So from the front, so you'll, you'll basically see it from the front and the back. It'll go all the way through and create something, something interesting and somewhat challenging. Now, 
Well, I'm going to draw that in place, and then I'm going to do some carving. Do I have a cup of tea first? It's definitely... See, the, the temptation now is because I'm working from home is to actually have a, have a beer. No, never. In the workshop. Nah, don't. Be a good boy. Let me know in the comments. That <laughs> looks better. Everything works now. That, those sound holes now look a little bit more like they're supposed to. I, I keep on thinking I need to make that longer. Um, this whole thing feels like it has purpose now. Look at that. Imagine you're playing this. Mm. I don't have a Japanese saw rasp here. I think I might cry. Rasp. It'll do.
All right. The light is fading. I've I've got various bits and pieces. Oh, I'm blind now. <laughs> that one's a bit bright. Um, yes, I did just look directly at three separate lights. Uh, I can't really see what I'm doing in here at the moment. I need some sort of an angle poise on the bench. So I'm going to leave it here for now. Uh, I'm not sure how many videos this series is going to take. I don't want to drag it out too much. I'm going to film as much as I can and we'll release it as regularly as humanly possible, at least two videos a week, maybe three. Uh, if you like what you've seen so far, please let me know in the comments below. I do read all of them and I reply to as many as I can, um, which is actually quite a few, especially at the moment when, you know, sitting at home. Uh, please click like, please subscribe, hit the notification button if you haven't yet done so. Um, but, yeah. This is going to be a pretty incredible instrument. I hope. Thank you for watching. See you soon. Bye bye.